Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'll be showing how to use the Postman tool to test a REST API. I've got a simple REST API that I've implemented using Spring Boot in for a simple Java system, and we're just going to exercise it using some GET and POST requests and kind of seeing how to make it work. So first off, how do you get uh, Postman? Well, load your browser, go to www.postman.com. And they offer some services and so forth to manage uh, things, but really just we care about the download. So download the app, and from here, pick it, install it. It's the usual stuff. Okay, so when you launch it, you'll look something like this. I already have a number of collections defined here on the left-hand side. If you want to do just a quick test, you can click the plus here, and it will create a brand new um, query for you. So I happen to have some data already created. Let's just go ahead and do a get on that. So I'm going to type it in. I'll type it in to start with. It's going to do a GET request to HTTP localhost 8080, my API this one is at, and in test. And that's good enough. I'll do that, and it gives me back hello world. Perfect. That's what my system's supposed to do. It's sending me back uh, some data. We'll look at that in just a minute. Now let's see, well, if I just wanted to put things in and do a one-off, that's easy to do. But generally, if you're testing a system, you're going to want to be able to come back and refer to these later. So I like to create a collection. So I'm going to click on New Collection. And I'm going to call this one the uh, Quote uh, Demo, because the system I'm working with manages quotes. And here it is. I'm going to put a star on it so it goes to the top so we can see it easily. So let's start to add things. So I'm going to create here, I'm going to say Add a Request. And let's start by, let's do the, uh, we're going to skip the test that we just did, and we'll do, um, say, get all quotes. So save it, and it's in here. I'm going to copy and paste this to start with, and then get rid of it. And then I don't want to save. So here I have it. Um, I want to do, to get all quotes, it's going to be under my API's root, and then under quotes, In fact, I think I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Zoom in, control, there we go. And now let's try that and see what happens. I'll send it, and it comes back with the one quote that I currently have defined in my system. So let's get back, there we go. Uh, so I'd rather die on my feet than live on my knees is the quote it comes back with. So that's good, that's what I'm expecting. Um, a few things we can see on this. Let me zoom out a bit more. There we go. Um, I can tell it what I want this to look like. So on the right hand side, I can tell it is this a XML. It'll format it as though it were XML and pretty print it, just plain text. Um, Autumn perhaps might catch it, but JSON I like because the data coming back from my server should be JSON. Okay, so I've got that quotes. Um, I always want to. I'm going to click save here just to save it back, and so that this quote here gets updated. Um, if you don't click save, all the changes you're making are just sort of on the fly. So that's fine. Okay, so let's now see what happens when we kind of mangle it up. So I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to click on this and say duplicate, and I can edit, right click, edit, and I'm going to try this one bad URL. So inside of this, uh, something like uh, no such place. So I execute my no such place URL, which of course doesn't exist. I'll save that over here, so my bad URL. And it comes back with the error that my Spring Boot server is returning to me. So it gives me back a status 404 and some information about that, whatever my server is configured to reply with. You'll note in this case that my error is coming back status is 404 not found, precisely what I'm looking for. OK, uh, let me rerun the get all quotes. I'll send that. And we can see that this came back as status 200. So that's giving me the HTTP status. The message I sent was fine. Some other things that I can look at, I can specify headers. If I wanted to provide some specific headers in here, I can do that. The temporary headers that it will automatically assign for me, it'll describe the user agent and so forth. Generally, I can just ignore those. I don't really care about those in my application. Now let's set it up for doing um, getting a specific one. So a REST API, you're often going to, let's see here, let's just go right click, or sorry, click on that and say uh, add request. And I'm going to say uh, get quote, let's go get quote one. So 
So under quotes, I can put in a number, so quote one, for example. Now quote one doesn't yet exist. I'm gonna save my changes that I made. I'll put this in, I'll send it. And in this case, I get nothing back. Hmm, my server is giving me a empty set back. Now it probably shouldn't do that. Uh, that's probably a bug on my server side, but we can see that nothing is coming back. It's just an empty response. Let's go ahead and post to it. So I'm gonna create a new one. We have to do a post. So I'm gonna create a request and I say create new quote. Here it is at the bottom. It defaults to a get. I want this to be a post request. I want to post to API slash quotes. And in a post, I need to send it some data as well. So I happen to have some preformatted data that's in, uh, let's go into under body. Most posts are going to expect under body. And then I have to tell it what data type that's going to be. So here I can just say, for example, raw, and I'll just type in the data. Now, I'll leave it like this for just a moment. It's raw data. It's defaulting the specific type to text. I'll save. I'll send this, and it's going to get rejected. Hmm. Let's see why. Oh, heh. that's why. The actual server was not right. OK, so now I've done the request. My server came back to me, and it said here, unsupported uh, content type, plain text, not supported. My server is expecting JSON. So I'll switch this type to JSON and send it now and it works fine. Uh, we can go back here. The other error we just saw a moment ago is if I have a bad URL, for example, and I try to do a send, it says I can't get any response from the server. So if the server's not running, which is maybe something I'll demo at the end, um, then we'll make sure that we'll kind of see the error looks like on that. So I'll run this again. Now, my server is not particularly smart. It can keep putting in the same quote a bunch of times. Let me just change the quote here so we get some different data as well. And it sends it back to me, so we can see on the right-hand side it's sending it back to me all the time. And now, I'll save that, and let's get all quotes. Click back on that, send it. Oh, it's not sending all quotes because it's got that path. Update it so it gives me the right thing. And now it sends back me all the data. It's coming back as a JSON array, so we can see here all the different elements. I've done the same quote a couple times, but we've got different quotes going in. OK, so that's the array. Uh, my server can also generate an error. So if I go back to posting a request, a quote, and I'll put in a new one. This quote happens to be from anonymous, which I will just leave as blank, but my server is not going to accept that. So I'm going to try sending it, and my server then rejects it. It says, error, person or quote must not be empty. So that's a specific error generated by my server, and it's choosing to send back a 400 bad request. So something was going wrong. And the server realized that. Okay, so two more things to show. One I want to do is do a get request using a query string. Um, incidentally, I'll save that for the moment. If I go back up here, for example, get quote one, um, it's not pulling in the data here. I apparently didn't save the path. Let's try that. Quote one. Save, run it. So now it's getting the quote of ID one. This here is a path variable, and I'm simply hard coding my URL. My server is pulling this up and extracting data, so I'll send this one as a four. It gives me nothing because there's no four. I think we have a three, which is the last one I added. So we can see that I'm interacting with the server's REST API. OK, so we've seen that. Ah, yes, query strings. So let's do a new one. So I'm going to add a request. And I'm going to say, uh, get with query string. This is how we do things like uh, put in requests to Google and so on. So I happen to have a copy over my endpoint to start with. So the endpoint on my server is this thing with uh, by name. I'll zoom in so we can see the text a little better. And then I happen to know the query string. So I'll type, put in the whole query string. And I can say person equals, and I'll do a new one. Um, which person do I have here? Uh, yeah, I guess Mark Twain's, uh, yeah, yeah, Mark Twain's an easy one. So I'm going to put in Mark, oops, I don't want the quotes, equals Mark. I happen to have done this one before, so it's coming up as autocomplete. But I have a space in it. So I'm going to put in a uh, percent 20, which is the code for space, and then Twain. And when I run this, I'll zoom out, it gives me back the list of quotes from Mark Twain. So here I happen to have IDs 1 and 2 match that data.
Now I can actually see the values down here. I'm inside under params, and it's encoding into it as the person parameter and then the value. And so I don't necessarily have to just edit it up here. I can do it through the, the interface uh, along here. OK, and the last thing I want to show is what happens when the server goes down. So I'm not going to kill the server. So the server's now been stopped. And I'll go back to executing any one of these commands. Sending request. And could not get any response. So if you're trying to do this to test one of your servers, this may mean that your server's not yet working, or it's not yet running on the right port, um, or somehow it's not responding to the requests. If I restart my server, There you go, server's now restarting. When I try to execute this at startup, it queued it, okay, it took it. And if I, for example, don't have anything here, it's not gonna take it. So file not found, because my server's coming back pretty quick saying it can't find the resource. Okay, thank you all for watching. That's all I've got on this. If you liked the video, or so go ahead and subscribe. Otherwise, have a great day.